Hey, I'm Marcus. And I'm Atrex. We are Working Class Nerds. Cue the intro. We are Working Class Nerds, the podcast that gives you no information about your favorite information. Today is Thursday, April 28th, 2022, and you can find this 150 podcast on Apple Podcasts, Buzzsprout, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and anywhere you can find a podcast in the galaxy far, far away. You can watch me terribly fail at video games Tuesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays at twitch.tv slash MarcusB814. And you can see me play MMOs and other fun things Sunday and Monday nights at twitch.tv slash A underscore Atrax. You can find the both of us on Twitter. I am at MarcusB814. And I am at Atrax underscore A. And this week's episode is the big 150. Nick is out getting hit with balls and getting covered in paint. So I'm <laughs> assisting Marcus celebrate this milestone and also welcome the guest today. He is a master of pull-ups, BioWare certified content creator, <laughs> and recurring guest and longtime friend of the working class nerds. It's Kogus. Welcome back to the show. Hey guys. What have you been up to? Oh, what's up, guys? Uh, not much, not much. Lots of uh just enjoying life as it is uh doing some studying here and there for some things at work and pvping in swotor playing my favorite class the jug because i love jugs they're just so much fun well yeah especially when they're bouncing (laughs) Um, right you would love it but anyway so like atrex said nick is at a national uh paintball tournament he is definitely getting uh, shot with lots of different balls and splattering all over his face. And uh, he'll be coming home with lots of welts. So good luck, Nick. And uh, yeah. But Kogus, what have you been doing in SWOTOR? Well, it's been, it's, uh, so PVP, ranked PVP has kind of died down a little bit on Satil Shan. So I've been playing just mainly regs. I've been um, working on just actually playing some Rage versus Vengeance Juggernaut. I know, I know, I know. Gas, he's not playing the exact same thing. I might switch it up and actually start playing some Sork or PT later on. Who knows? Whoa. Um, yeah, I, I'm gonna try to expand a little bit more in this expansion because I, I'm really enjoying it. I actually was really terrified of how the juggernauts were gonna be uh changed and oh my gosh, it was actually a lot of fun. Uh I like within like the first two or three days, I was like, hold on, these changes are actually really good. There are still some things I miss from 6.0, but for the most part, 7.0 oh juggernaut is much more viable than 6.0 or pretty much anything from 5.0 it's almost as good as it was uh before 5.6 when they did a lot of class balance which is many years ago yeah you know i would say for the most part that the happiest people in the new expansion for swotor have been pvp players right um, or that I've noticed, you know what I'm saying? Uh, because it's been new and fresh. And you can the least match upset. Lot, right? How about that? I mean, the only thing that's really bad right now is that augments are not working in PVP. So you essentially just go in with your 320 gear and you don't have to really work. You can't really do much for min maxing. So you just kind of go in there. Uh, it was a lot of fun when the expansion first dropped. Uh, because what ended up happening was the 306 gear was actually bolstering, right word, wrong word, better than 320 gear. So if you were trying to PvP in your 306 gear, you realize that your 306 gear 
is better than anything else you have that you can get. So you were already min max for the expansion for like the first month and a half. Right. Interesting. And wow. then they fixed it, and now you have to actually have gear, which made me sad. Well, there's a lot more going on with the game right now than just that. Um, man, I'll tell you what, being in my basement, you know what Google Docs has to do? They have to have a dark mode installed. Don't they? Can no. you switch the... No. There is no dark mode for Google Docs. Look at my face. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're, there, I mean, you're pretty lit, I, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you have oh to actually God. set it up for dark mode on your desktop, I think. And I don't like it. Yeah, it's crazy. Oh, my God. It's bright. Anyways, so Atrax, what have you been up to? I have been really, really enjoying my MMO Mondays. I think that's been my highlight kind of lately. Uh, been mixing between Guild Wars 2 and World of Warcraft again. Um, found some relatively cheap sub time. So yeah, I got back into wow. I've, I, it's gotten a lot of hate and I think understandably because of what the company is going through and all of that stuff. But for me as a new player, well, relatively new, um, it's, it's been great just kind of getting back into it. It's sure. a feel good. And same with Guild Wars, actually the, what I do play with Guild Wars um, I mostly play with a group and it's, you know, the same group and we do fractals, which are basically dungeons. And we just kind of go in there, do those, try and get some gear. And that's, I mean, that's really what MMOs are all about, right? Just hanging out with friends and getting gear, getting stats. When you say dungeons, is it a four player or eight person content? Five. It's huh. five. It's five. Yeah. So... The way they do in Guild Wars, they have 25, I think it's more like, two, oh man, 20, 22, somewhere in there, because there's a couple duplicates, but they have like an easier and a more difficult version. But there's 25, and they're organized into four different, or I'm sorry, they're copied into four different tiers, tier one, two, three, and four. And they get more and more difficult with this... Um, mechanic called agony and in the easier tiers you can get armor and gear which you can equip that has agony resistance so you can do more difficult fractals it's kind of a nice they have a daily so is rotation like an augment? no no it's i'm mm, i guess it's like your veteran guess, buff yeah. is what it sounds like yeah so it is a socketed it is a socketed thing. So you get a piece of gear that has, you know, two, um, oh, what are they called? I can't remember. See, this is the type of MMO stuff I never pay attention to. I just play the game. <laughs> I just play the game. Um, but you, it's a socketed thing. And you, as you do these fractals, you get, you know, chests that you can unlock that have um, infusions. That's what they're called. That have infusion points. And you can combine lower tiers into higher tiers so you have like you know a bunch of tier ones that you get you can combine those into a tier five which gives you five agony resistance and then you can socket that onto a ring that you got which has two sockets so you know you put two now you have 10 agony resistance that sort you, of thing is your ring your precious uh it's kind of funny there's it's I forget what it's called, what it's exactly called. I'll have to look it up, but it's like the red ring of something. I call it the red ring of death. And I always say I have an, a dead Xbox in my inventory. Oh my God. Do you guys, did you guys remember that? I had my red yeah. ring of death, but I ended up meeting somebody that could just mod the Xbox. So mm -hmm. they just, I just gave it to him and he modded the hell out of that Xbox. And it was actually, that system was amazing. Oh yeah, the Xbox 360. I remember that was one of the selling points of the Xbox One was like, it can't get the red ring of death because there isn't a ring anymore. Right. Oh man, good But time. I feel like the Xbox One was so like subpar. Like there was nothing memorable about the Xbox One. I, oh man, I think it's all about perspective. For me, it, there was a lot of cool stuff. Titanfall on the Xbox One. There was no game on PlayStation 
in my mind at the time that could compare to Titanfall on the Xbox One. It that that game was so good. Wait, are we talking about the original Xbox or Xbox One? Xbox no, so- One. Xbox the One. So there was Xbox. Xbox, then it was Xbox 360, then it was the Xbox One. Yeah. And now it's the Xbox Series X. And because S, I never yeah. I never got into Xbox. I, I'm not a big console player except for the Switch. So you, you say Xbox, yeah, I'm like, fair. cool. Sorry. That one. <laughs> I should have clarified. I understand. That. Especially, especially when it's Xbox and Xbox One, and then the original Xbox, like the Xbox One, as some people would say. Right. I totally get that. Well, you know, it's so funny because what I think Xbox or Microsoft does right, and we and I've had this rant a thousand times, is they release their games day one on PC. So you can buy any game that comes out on the Xbox day one on the PlayStation on the PC. For me, that's a huge selling point. Yeah, because they're making their money anyways. It's like I, I I still try to figure out is Sony more worried about console sales or game sales? Definitely, I think they lose money I on think, every console I they game sell. sales. I think it's all game sales. Yeah, it's so all why? game sales because whenever they sell the console, they lose money. Yeah, they actually like lost money on whatever PlayStation at the when it when it releases. And then they want money back, you know, from the games or the accessories is mm-hmm. where they really start to make their money. Oh, yeah. Man, controllers are so expensive. Or yeah. you have, like, Nintendo, you have those IPs that they own, like Mario, right? And then they can just, they only have that. And I think Sony has yeah, some of those, I mean, too. That's, yeah. You get into exclusives and stuff. Um, so, yeah, big sidebar. And actually, it's funny that you mentioned Microsoft because they own Blizzard now and huge wow news. I mean, we've gotten Wrath of the Lich King classic announced, another wow expansion, and they're announcing a mobile game too. Wait, can, all right, so you just dove into this. They're releasing something that was already released. It's a- Wait a minute. We can, you could just play it and go do that expansion. Yes, but the, the leveling system is a lot different. The game has changed drastically. Like if you play, if you play retail, wow, which is like current, wow. And you play classic, wow. And you try and play them the same, you know, retail, wow. In your starting zone, you can just run in there and you probably won't die in classic. While you will get wrecked by you know, like a mouse or, you know, a murloc or something. Yeah. It's, but something else that is really clear to me. Mm -hmm. Everybody in this world is all talk when it comes to games or stuff like that. Because my, what I, everybody would quit. Wow. They're like, ah, what they're doing is wrong. But all those people are starting to crawl right back. Yeah. And for me, oh, look at the little puppy in the back. Sorry. I see Kogus has got his puppy behind him. Anyway, uh, for me, it's more of like, okay, it's been two years. Like, it's almost like Warcraft is a little bit throwing a little SWOTOR out there because, like, it's been two years since an expansion, right? Of course, they're due for an expansion. And people are not, um, people are going to come back. That's, I guess what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Of course. Like, like, just like SWOTOR players, when they, uh, when 7.0 came out, there was an influx of people. When Witch Queen came out for Destiny, influx of people. And then it dies down within a month. Right. Well, it's not even that it dies down in a month. It's that they... People play the game, right? Mm-hmm. So now you look at like all those people that quit WoW because of their whatever. Uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, how do you say it? Because of what was going on in the business, but everybody came right. back. Mm-hmm. People are coming back. They're, oh, I'm never going back. Eh. 
that fishing right. pole goes out with that lure and it's spinning through the water. You do want to get it. Yep. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and it's that MMO hook that I always talk about. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I watched the trailer for the expansion. All I, I saw don't get was. It. Yeah, I know. Oh, that's what I was going to say. I All I, I saw was it. a bunch of dragons that you're going to be able to fly. That's it. That's yeah. it. Like, uh-huh. okay, so they I put saw- dragons in the game. This has been in Guild Wars 2 for since Guild Wars 2 came out. And Guild oh. Wars 2 is killing all the dragons now. So, yeah. I mean, it is it is a new class and race in one. You know, so they are adding that to the game. And obviously new areas and stuff. I mean, they're trying. Wait, what the, wait, they're- wait, so you're saying a playable race is a dragon? Yeah. Yeah, they're called the drag theory. You can, they're like. Oh, that's not lame at all so so i mean this is this was where yeah. i saw the trailer you're you see this stone dude you see him with other stone dudes mm-hmm. and they say okay wait for the signal sleep and so they sleep stone dude wakes up stone dude's friends are all dead stone mm-hmm. dude wakes tries to wake up dragons and then he does it and then there's dragons and then that's the trailer <sighs> yeah you know what the Mr. Pandoria one, like as much as people gave it sh- shit for being like they joked about bringing in the Pandorums, like as an April Fool's, and now it's actually happening. At least that was a great trailer, you know, where you have the orc and the human yeah. fighting each other, and then they're like, "Here, take the stick that I was just fighting you with, and mm-hmm. or you were fighting me with, and use it against this dude." I kind of liked the idea of the panda one because who doesn't want to play as Kung Fu Panda? Right? Like, I'm a fat guy. Let me tell you, this fat guy wants to be a ninja, just like uh, Beverly Hills Ninja or Kung Fu Panda. I've played a panda monk recently. I did that on stream the other day. That was a ton of fun. But, monk panda. Yeah, it's so it's... It, I guess I'm looking for more details. And I'll bring up something else as a sidebar to the trailer, like, with nothing. Did you guys see the new Thor trailer? No, I haven't. What? I have. I okay. Yeah, I have. And I feel just as lost watching the Thor trailer that I did watching End of Dragons or Dragon Dragon Bones, whatever it's called for World of Warcraft. Yeah. Dragon did you Flight. did you enjoy Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah, I loved Guardians of the Galaxy. So how are you lost with the with the Thor? Or did you not like Thor? Like, no, it just me? like I don't know what's like all it felt like was it was just a bunch of scenes thrown together and the best you, you got Chris Pratt and them talking about family and see you later. Like I have no idea what the plot of this movie is going to be. We oh. don't, I don't want to know what the plot of the movie is going to be. I'm excited for it. I mean, obviously it's, I, I, at least I would think that it's Thor doing whatever he is with the guardians and then calling it a day because he got back into shape. I mean, you got thick Thor working out to get back into like getting back into Thor. shape. I love that part. And then, you know, cause he's lifting these chains of who knows what holding the monster, like, you know, whatever it was back, getting back into shape. And now he's like, all right, he's recovering from, you know, that five year depression that he had of, of failing back in, um, infinity war was an end game. Infinity was, war. Bef- infinity wars. Right. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. you gotta like, imagine the amount of, emotional damage he had emotional damage when you know when when uh when he was told you should have gone for the head you know he could have stopped everything from happening for 5 years and that that sticks with you and so now we, we're seeing him getting over that and we're going to see how he's doing and all of a sudden at the end of the trailer we see Monier Monier his hammer is lovely faithful hammer going to some stranger bump 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 to him i mean we all know who that is but i'm not going to spoil it for you right jane fonda <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness anyway so um so a track so you're playing your mmos you're back in a while yes you find some cheap sub time you're you when you die you go to the grave what yep. about the first person shooters? Run all the way back. Yeah. Uh yeah. So the CS CSGO events have been going on, the PGL major as well as Blast. 
um, which are two professional tournaments. I really, really enjoy those uh, esports. Go Astralis. Do you enjoy um, Do you compete in them? No, no. That is, I'm, I don't want to take it that seriously. And I personally, I don't want to take any game that seriously. Like, I enjoy watching people who do. I think that, you know, I can appreciate it, but I just, I don't know if I could be able to do that. I don't know if I could be a professional gamer in that respect. You know, I could be a professional gamer in general. Just, I play a ton of games, but I don't know if I could do that. That's too many people, man. <laughs> So that's going on. And then I've also, for first-person shooters, I've been playing uh, Apex with my good friend Ripsick and uh, Rykans as well has hopped in for a couple of Apex games, which I wanted to bring up because, you know, I don't normally play Battle Royale games. I don't normally enjoy them, but this that's one I actually... Battle Royale with cheese? <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a lot of cheese. There's a lot of cheese in these Battle Royales, let me tell you. Um, but it's really fun. I, I've found to just not take them seriously at all. And you just run in there all the time. And sometimes you goon people and end up winning. And sometimes you don't. And you know, that's it. I, like, I can't play it solo, but it's I a lot played of fun apex in the beginning and I mm -hmm. liked it. The only yeah. thing I didn't like is, and this is, see, this is more just complaining. Cause it's not perfect is they give you like 10 bullets to a clip. So you yep. shoot those, and if you don't get that mechanic of like switching guns to finish somebody off, you're always going to die. Yep. They're never going to give you enough bullets in one clip to kill the other opponent. I've learned that the hard way way too many yeah. times. So that's that's pretty much been what uh, how, I've been doing. One more Apex question. How many characters can you pick from now? Uh, Six. I don't have very many unlocked. But yeah, but how many are available? Oh, how many are available? Um, at least, tw I think 20. Wow. At least 20, because um, what Rip does sometimes is he'll do a challenge. He has a 20-sided die, and he just rolls one to pick a random character. Yeah, that's awesome, because when that's I played, I think there was seven. They just, like, oh, okay. they, I forget the guy's psycho name. Uh, oh, was, Octane? Yes, he was just released when I play it. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, that was he's way back. He's pretty low on the list. Right. Yeah, but he was the new character. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. There's quite a few, and I still have yet to be able to identify them. People call them out all the time, and I'm just like, well, there's one over there. Shoot at him. You know, like, that's pretty much my experience with it. But, um, yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun getting to just enjoy that. Apex is I think it has really really good fluid movement. It definitely um, does. And, stuff and like there's that. no fall damage, good. which is amazing. Yes, yes, exactly. You can leap off a cliff and not die. Yep. Yeah. And you can uh you can take those um zip lines straight up into the air and then you can like fly around and That wasn't in the game when I did it. Oh really? When, when yeah. I Apex, that wasn't available. They added this new. I love it. They added it's like a giant balloon floating. I don't know, a hundred meters or so in the air with a zip line attached to it, and you can take it and it goes straight up, and then you can just fly and relocate your whole squad, you know, somewhere else. It's yeah. it's pretty pretty neat. I will say that a battle battle royale is the most streamer friendly type of game there is. Yep, hundred percent. You, you get in the game. You you play for 10 minutes, five minutes, one minute, three minutes, and then you go to a lobby. So, like, the streamer can focus on the game, blah, 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 kill, kill, kill. As soon as he dies, you have, like, five minutes of nothing so you can hang out, chat with the chat, and move on. I think that's why Battle Royales were so popular. Yeah, it is a lot of action, and it's not a lot of cues. And it's not a lot of downtime either. Even when you're not necessarily engaging on enemies, there's always that constant looking around and like, well, is somebody over here? Is somebody over there? We should maybe move over here. It is nonstop action. So, Kogus, which... did you ever play any first person shooters? I'm trying to think. Um, does Goldeneye count? 
Yes. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent on N sixty four. Yeah, that could be the N64. greatest. N sixty four. That could be the greatest first person shooter ever created. It certainly. I mean, it was helped. the game changer, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, it defined the genre dun, dun, for sure. Dun, 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 what was the uh, so, What was the short guy that always ran around? Odd, odd job. job. Yeah. Never play odd job, man. It was an nope. unwritten. Well, it was a really often spoken rule. You don't pick odd job. Mm-hmm. And then if you got the golden gun, it was over. My friends and I, yep. we used to play uh, armor maxed out or handicap maxed out, whichever one it was, and slappers only. So we'd literally just be trying to slap each other. And we all year like, uh, uh, ah, uh, 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 for 30 minutes. And we're just like, I'm going to kill you. That's <laughs> it's awesome. just like, well, oh. I, only ha- I still have half my health. <laughs> That's amazing. All right. So... <laughs> Yeah, I, so have some, I have some rumors for you. On March 17th, 2022, GoldenEye's trademark has been updated by Nintendo. Ooh. Okay. Whoa. What does that mean? Necessarily. I bet they're going to remaster the game. Release Again. it on the Switch. So updated as in they renewed their the trademark they renewed the trademark on so they it. own the trademark but you can put it in like your legacy bank okay purgatory and and update it and bring it back okay gotcha so if they redid the trademark they paid all that money to bring it back i'm guessing they're doing a remaster or a brand new game because look at what they did with um Oh my god, I can't believe it. Final Fantasy VII. That remake looked incredible. People loved it, and it was only a third of the actual game. Right. And, well, I also wonder, too, because the Switch is now, they've offered with their, I think it's like the Switch Plus expansion pack or whatever. You can get N64 games on the switch you can play those old n64 games so they might be bringing you know like in the meantime they might port it to that and then like you said remaster it and bring it update the graphics like bring it oh yeah like think about how many nerds like us would that would play that game if that game came out can you imagine the twitch viewership or the amount of streamers playing fucking golden eye would you stream it kogus if it came out on switch I probably would not uh, oh. just because I have no, I have no strong skills in this first person perspective. And I, I don't know, man, I've got, I, I'm not a uh, big enough fish for that. All right. It's oh, not my, oh, it's Lord. not my pool. No, I understand <laughs> that. I would, I would stream it day of one time just because. Yep. Like the nostalgia of it. Mm hmm. And I would probably do a LAN party stream where oh, I'd have I would call my buddies fun. and like bring Nick over and two of our other friends and just sit there on four screens, split screen, and then just go. But yeah. I do like uh I do like the Nintendo Switch Plus that you can play Nintendo and Super Nintendo games on it. Yeah. I I find myself playing F Zero a lot. Wow. From Super Nintendo. I loved that game when I was a kid. Because you go over the Yes, you just got to say, I love that game. Stop using the past tense. Oh, well, I do love the game still. That and... There you go. Uh, UN Squadron, but they don't have that on there. Gotcha. It was just so, one of those things. Go ahead. So, Marcus, would you say that's what you've been up to lately? No. No. <laughs> Wonderful segue, though. Um, First... I'm going to take a couple of minutes. Sorry, everybody listening. Um, thank you. I'm going to say thank you a lot because of stream as well, but thank you. 150 episodes. Yes. Nick is not here last week. We were going to record 150 and um, go through every single guest's name that we did, but Nick and I decided to get dinner and then we ended up eating so much and just chatting the whole time that we didn't make it back to record. And that's okay too. Um, we've been doing this for four and a half years and, uh, wow. 150 episodes is no joke. Like the first three years was every other week. And then 
when COVID hit, we did every week and we haven't stopped. And I, you both have been on the show multiple times and like, there's other people that have been on and it's been so surreal. And to think that we've said, Hey, uh, Marcus uh, over 150 times, because there's a couple lost episodes that didn't make it to production. Um, and it's surreal to think that we still do this week in and week out. And yeah. if I can say what's even more surreal is after the show goes out and your friend or somebody messages you or pings you and says, you son of a bitch. I can't believe you said that or, or something of that sort, or, Oh, this guy, he's he doesn't know what he's talking about. Or the day that I said the, I'll tell you the worst hate I've ever gotten was the day that I went crazy talking about how bad the PlayStation controller is. I think I legit got 30 messages telling me how I suck so bad and just realized that PlayStation is the superior race and all this stuff. And it was, it's fucking funny, man. Um, That's hilarious. Yeah. There's been some really funny messages or when I call somebody out or Nick calls somebody out and then you get the ping. Thanks for calling me out, dude. You're like, no problem. Suck less. You know what I mean? Uh, right. It's, uh, it's no small feat. Like, yes, other podcasts have hundreds more episodes, but like for us, 150 episodes, it's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot of guests to arrange. That's a lot of topics to talk about. That's a lot of notes made. And we've got some cool fucking guests, man. And it's not stopping. This train is... It's like one of those uh, those Chinese high-speed trains. They're, those things are trucking. Bullet trains? Yeah, the yeah. bullet train. That's what it's called. I want to go on one of those. It would be really cool. I, I too... Th have often thought like it'd be cool to visit some of those larger, you know, cities in that part of the world. Well, right. Cause like, I think isn't China. Oh no. Japan has it too. Right. The bullet train. But I think it's only I think Japan that's where it's from is Japan. I think, Oh, I think that's where it originated from. I'd be Japan. too afraid that they'd put a, don't quote like, me on that though. Well, if it's in Japan, I'd be a little afraid that they'd put a Mario banana on the tracks and it would go off. <laughs> Or they shoot. That a would be shell. so great, though. Can you imagine if that's how everybody got around? Is in Mario Karts. It would be. It would be wild. <laughs> All right, I gotta ask, who is your go-to uh, Mario Kart player, Kogus? Oh wow, which which version of the Mario Kart are we looking at? Wait, you switch characters by the game? Oh yeah, dude. Listen, what I there's a difference between like the Super Mario Kart character list, the N64 Mario Kart character list, yeah, and the newest one, which is Mario Eight Deluxe, and all those. I mean, there's there's a lot. There's you a lot of Mario fun Karts ones. on the DS too. Wait a minute, I, I never played those, so I'm only talking about like the oh, main okay, system. Gotcha. Wait, I'm I just must be an old motherfucker. Because I only pick one character. There is only one to pick. Yeah, you only pick Toad. Toad, of course. That you is only, only pick character. Toad. Only pick Toad. That's it. There is no, nobody else. I'm sorry, Why? but there's there's a lot of fun characters actually, in the new one. Go ahead. That's go it. ahead, Adrex. Oh, I was <laughs> gonna, go ahead. <laughs> you first. You're the guest. <laughs> All right, fine. I cave. He's you can't see it on the if you're hearing it, you can't <laughs> see it. He's pointing at me. He's saying it's my turn. All right. Yeah. In dub I totally disagree, Marcus. In double dash, Toadette way better than Toad. You get way more golden mushrooms when you have Toadette in your cart than when I, you have Toad. I don't need uh golden mushrooms. I've got the magic ones. Also, the Oh red, my. <laughs> The red paratroopa is the best. You get the most red shells. So I, let's see if we go back to this. Uh, uh, when Super Mario Kart came out for the Super Nintendo, me and my best friend, we would be like, we would dub ourselves the Bash Brothers. I don't know how, 
but he would pick Donkey Kong or Bowser, and I would pick the other one. So it was always he'd be Donkey Kong or Bowser, and I'd be Donkey Kong or Bowser. And we're like, we're just the best bros. And we'd see how much we can just push each other off of the tracks, right? That's uh, awesome. Somewhat the same in 64 version. Uh, and then on the Switch one, or the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, it was... Um, so many of the of the cool uh like the what are the the little bowser dudes you know the one with the with the colorful mohawk that that was one that i really liked or, oh yeah or the heavier set little one those guys are a lot of fun to play so i'm just like why would i want to play toadette when i could be one of these guys and just be mischievous because by no means am i ever mischievous in real life yeah right did you see his nose grow pinocchio um, I, I, well, maybe, okay, but honestly, I'm being so honest here. Like I've only ever played, like, of course I've tried another character, but like when it's go time, it's only Toad and it will ever only be Toad because do you, that's... do you always win? Yes. Well, always. No, 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 no. If I lose, it's usually the time I lose. I don't do the online stuff. Right. But it's like the 200 CC where you got to like uh -huh. jump into the corner and drift. Oh, yeah. 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 Like that's hardcore. You know, the other ones, of course, I win, but like 200 CC, that's like pro level. And you have to be in third place the entire race. So you got to keep it off until it's like halfway through the third third and final lap where that's where you kick it into gear. Because if you're in first place, they're going to blue shell you because the AI will not let you win. Oh yeah, do I have I have games where I've gotten ten coins, you know, because I'm trying to get all ten coins on Mario Kart Eight, and literally as I am crossing the finish line, like my my front wheel is already over the finish line, but I haven't the game hasn't registered that I hit the finish line yet. I got hit with a lightning bolt, lost three of my coins, down to seven didn't finish it with that mario kart 8 is so brutal to you it's not even it's not even funny it's so mean you know we should all race one race out of best you mean of one race you can't just have a best one race one. night of mario kart you can't <laughs> do that you can't just be like you all right guys we're gonna do just one race. race no 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 you gotta do a full circuit at a minimum a full circuit Can and at the play it at, at, at a good average you got to do all the circuits because each circuit is different each circuit has yep. many different complexities to it you can't Can just you... say all right we're going to do one race the regular circle track no big deal all right and go and Marcus will be like yahoo yeah <laughs> Isn't there, there's like 32 different tracks. You want to do one race, one race for pink slips. And it'll be nope. my choice. Nope. I can't wait to kill. I can't wait to beat him and be like, I'm going to kill Toad now. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm in trouble. Ah. See, mine doesn't usually <laughs> say that because I win. I always win too. But can wait? So on the switch, here's the thing: is that I always win <laughs> three. <laughs> so, my, so my question to you guys are: Does the switch have online, like where you can have friends? Yeah, yeah. What's it your? Does. You just can't do voiceover switch. It's because not of toxicity. Yeah, and it's not nearly as easy because instead of just being like, oh yeah, my gamer tag is blah blah blah, it's like my switch code is seven eight three zero six two four W Z M like it it's this super long code. And if I can go one more uh conspiracy theory, they're saying that the switch can't handle Breath of the Wild too. So ready for my tinfoil hat? they when they released uh Breath of the Wild 2, brand new Switch gets released with it. Well, isn't there already a Switch Pro? Do they just mean that it won't be good? It's no, that's the OLED. OLED. Yeah, it's just oh, a bigger OLED. screen. That's it. Everything else is the same. Oh. Just bigger screen. They didn't even put more RAM I'm, in it. I mean, 
I can I can see that, but I I don't know. You need a bigger game catalog for the Switch before you can have another one. The game catalog is pretty legit. Listen, listen. Compared to where the Wii U was, uh, I mean, I don't know That's if you guys true. remember back then, but the Wii U, if the Switch was not what it is, Nintendo would be out of the game. Like, Nintendo would not be where it's at. It barely survived its Wii U phase, and the Switch brought it back out of the Dark Age. My my friends and I always made it a joke. We need an ambulance! Wii U! Wii U! <laughs> <laughs> The uh, anyway, um, and then last Sunday, April 24th, was my two year stream anniversary. Um, let's go. My first year, my first stream two years ago, uh, was April 24th, and I didn't make it a big deal. A few people called me out on that, and I just didn't want to make it a big deal, but everybody ended up making it a big deal. It was so much fun. I I played Destiny and like people were in there. They were making me laugh. I was trying to make them laugh, but it was mostly rip that guy. And it was so much fun. Rip that guy. And rip you know, guy. you don't realize how long two years is until you think about like, wow, I've been doing this two years. It feels like I just started doing this. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, two years ago, my daughter was four. Now she's six. You know what I mean? Like, it's just crazy to me. And I'm officially yeah. old. -er. And uh, yeah, so thank you to everybody who has been continuing to support the channel and coming by and having fun. You guys have no idea how much that shit means to me. Um, this has been a, it's been a tough, tough couple months, but it's really good to see everybody come around and come hang out and you know getting people to play the game that's awesome because destiny is really fun um and i don't know how the twitch algorithm works but thank you to all the people that have rated my channel like these people i have no idea who they are but they seem to find me there is that's no awesome. twitch algorithm these are people finding you that's the biggest issue with twitch is that there's no algorithm these are the people that have looked out into the Destiny community and have found you, Marcus B814, and have said, I think I want to raid this guy. That That is literally the biggest issue with Twitch, is that there's no algorithm. There's no channels, like what, channels recommended? You think, you think that comes up? You think people read that? That's like the weakest thing. Compare that to YouTube's algorithm. Compare that to a TikTok algorithm. You gotta be kidding me. Sorry. Well... Small, no, no, you're small tangent into another tangent. I'm not even going to let you talk right now, Marcus. So go, I'm go, very go. happy that you did your two year anniversary because I didn't do anything big uh, for any of my, I've never done a Twitch anniversary. I don't even think you, if you've realized that, but last year or this year, however you want to say it, I didn't do a birthday stream uh, the week before, like the, it was like my birthday was on a s Saturday on that Monday. I got in a car accident and I totaled my car. So I was not in the mood to do anything. I was barely streaming as it was through that. I just gotten over COVID and I was just like, I don't want to do anything. And I regret it so much that I didn't do anything because it's just a missed opportunity to celebrate with your, with your peers, with your community, with your viewers, with just like all that. I mean, look at what Atrex did for you on this one. With that awesome video. I've watched that thing like three or four times. I love it. We get to see Marcus going. Hey! We get to see <laughs> smooth baby face Marcus with Tatooine in the background. It's just hilarious. And it's a missed opportunity when you don't do that. So I'm very happy you did it. I appreciate totally you saying agree. that. And, you know, I was going to say, anyways, an Atrax made an awesome video partnered up with green bot and it came out so good and i didn't even know it was happening until he posted it he sent me a message that was like oh yeah here play this and i will say this one thing is having somebody do that for you or i didn't know but somebody doing that like anybody out there that wants a video like that i tell you to call green bot or get a hold of them 
because it may not cost a lot of money, but have send them like 20 clips of your past, however long you've been streaming. Because the one thing that I noticed from the video is how far the channel has come. If yep. you look at some of those, like I had banners all over the whole screen was cluttered with stuff. I was, I got attacked by a fucking bee. Like, a bee in my house. Right. But like, and to watch a stream evolve is pretty cool. Cause if you, even if you go back, I'll say Kogus's, you go back two years in Kogus's stream, his stream looks vastly different then than it does now. Yep. And we should hope so. We always want to strive uh, to be to grow, right? Um, there, there was uh, there was somebody who after I, it was just after I actually got um, to become an official Soul Tour content creator. So this was this was a long time ago now. But he he talked to me in voice, and he was like, you know, Kogus, you used to do this, you used to do that, and you don't do that anymore, Kogus. You've changed. And I and, and he tried to kind of take that as a as a jab at me, and now that um, semi resurfaced, and I'm like I'm not having anything to do with this person. He's he's done some really messed up things. He said some really messed up things in my presence. He's you know messaged me upset that you know people antagonized him for the things that he said, and you know I'm just like I'm glad I've actually changed. Because the worst thing is to see somebody the exact same spot where they were four years ago and not grow and not grow as a streamer, not grow as a person, not grow like what have they added to themselves? You know, what what are they learning? Are they doing anything new or are they just doing the same old thing? You know, and I, I really I, I actually pity that person now. Because they're not doing anything different. They're not doing anything to have themselves grow. And they're still doing their best to try to be relative in what yeah. they do. But, I mean, it's just it's just sad. Well, you, it's like you said. You have to evolve, right? You have to evolve to grow. Somebody, you know, one of the most powerful things that another streamer said to me and this is dating back a while and i'm not going to call the person out because the person hearing it will know i was talking about followers i think i was going for a thousand followers or maybe 500 right and i remember it and i said man i lost three followers today and the person said to me i unfollow people all the time and i said really and they said yeah and i said why he said, because if their content was great, I would watch their channel. And I said, and he actually said, you're doing that person a favor by unfollowing them because it's letting them know that they need to work on their stuff. And now I follow everybody and I stick around, but what was valuable out of that was watch your own content. And always strive to be a better streamer, content creator, husband, dad, whatever it is. Always strive to be better. And yep. that sticks with me to this day because I think about it all the time. Like, you know, how do I make my stream better? I think I have this conversation with friends and they have the same conversation with me. It's how do you make your stream better every time? Squats. That's the answer. Well, pull-ups is the best. Yeah, pull-ups. I thought it yeah, was my arms are still sore, by the way. <laughs> that's the best. But see, but that's how you engage. And that's but that's how you engage your audience. Like, even if they don't want to donate bits or sub or anything like that, you have channel points where if they hang out in your stream and you save X amount of points, you'll do a pull-up. But if you get three or four people that all do that at the same time, now you got to do four fucking pull-ups. I'm a big guy. Pull-ups are awful. Awful. Yeah. Like, yeah, awful. And you start. That's actually, 
You start doing yeah, 20 you, it's, more it's really cool that you bring that up because that's exactly what I was having issues on was I was not having the engagement that I was looking for on on Wednesdays. And that's where I was like, I think I was talking to you or I was trying to think of something to do. And I was like, so what do I do? Let's do, well, I've got this pull-up bar. I got this closet behind me. Why don't I just make some use of it? And everybody can be like, dude, that closet's as bad as your inventory, Kogas. You know, and I'll be like, yeah, we don't worry about it. <laughs> but, you know, that's what, those are the kind of things, you know, like you, you have to, you have to grow, you have to adapt, you have to change, you know, and you try your best to figure it out. Now, every stream, it has a possibility of being a pull-up stream or a squat stream, or I guess it's gray sweatpants stream or salsa dancing, uh, because that's, that's how I, I re-engage my chat because not everybody is a fan of pvp i know shocker i'm shocked i don't get it but it's okay well i think i think the difference between pvp and i'm doing my quotation marks with my bunny ears and your stream is you make pvp fun and non-toxic you're not screaming fuck yeah you know what i mean you're not yep. like you're not bringing toxicity. You're actually bringing positivity. You're like, fuck, I lost. Oh, well, let's get ready for the next one. You know what I mean? And then on top of it, you know the game you play so well that you're almost, while you're playing it, you're almost like your own announcer. So for a lot of people who don't play SWOTOR PvP and they want to, they can watch your stream and learn how to play the game by just watching and listening to you because you're almost, you're like teaching them how to do it while you're playing it so it's yeah. almost like it, it, it engages more people i mean there's some other swotor pvpers like i can't even I, I i've tried there's only two swotor pvp players that i can really watch it's you and chimeri that's it because yeah. everybody else well i don't really know anybody else because i don't watch them you know what i mean like sure if another streamer is streaming pvp i'll watch but you you're like the you're like the what's that ring announcer's name let's get ready to rumble you know what i'm talking about yeah whatever yeah, that I guy's remember name is. Name. yeah whatever that guy's name is it's like what i think of when you're playing pvp because i'm i'm michael, engaged by watching it to do it but michael buffer all right so he made like millions just by saying that ladies and gentlemen for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching across the world on HBO Max. Let's get ready to rumble. I can't do it, but you know, that oh, was my that was best pretty shot. good. Yeah, I thought it was good. But yeah. Yeah. I was engaged. He made millions off of that, but yeah. Oh. But at the same time now, you know, it when you create content that is engaging for people to watch, they're going to watch. Right, if yep. you and if you're a brand new streamer, I wouldn't tell you to engage the chat. I would tell you to be consistent. You know what I mean? But other than Absolutely. that, but like evolve as you go. Don't think the way you're doing it today is the way you're going to be doing it three months from now, because play switching it up is okay. You yep. know, I've walked away from stuff that I've done streaming, which I loved, but I don't do it anymore because it didn't flow right with who you are. And let's be honest. It takes a while to figure out what you're going to be like as a streamer. Yep. You know, you oh, to yeah. find I'm your really little, bad. you know, I was talking with somebody today about, you know, believe it or not, I have the most fun in stream. Like when I'm doing the hard solo content and dying a lot and like crying but I will say like I did become a whiny bitch when I was doing one of the hard contents because it was like impossible for me. It was like too hard for me. Right. But I just need to suck less and learn how to play the game and get the right guns. So now I'm motivated to get the right guns so that I can do the content because sometimes you need a bigger gun. Anyways. Oh my. Um, a couple more things. Uh, Destiny released a like a like a trial kind of like Fortnite did with no building in Fortnite, And they like released it as like a trial, but it was such a hit. They fixed it. Gambit and destiny made it so that 
Gambit is a PVE and PVP game. So you can invade the other team's side. That's what makes it PVP. Or you stay on the PVE side and kill all the AI. And you collect moats, do all these things. But in the old Gambit, when somebody sends enemies to you because they deposited moats, you would lose your moats to be able to win the game. Well, now they stop that and it now if an invader comes in and is uh, is on your side you don't even need to he doesn't even need to kill anybody you lose moats just by him being in there so it almost makes your team have to go hunt out an invader which is a really cool mechanic and i'm actually enjoying it a lot um last thing is calling all destiny players if you're listening to the show i'm a, i'm on vacation next week this time next week, one week from today, I'll be doing a live stream from the place is called Bow's Castle, which it's all decorated in Bowser theme. Um, and I'm going to be hanging out with a bunch of friends, like Stay Alive and Nazir. Or Nerds Community. Yes. And um, there's a bunch wait, of... Gonna, where are you guys? Wait, when is, where? Huh? In Orlando. Ooh, what? Where? When? How? In Orlando. He's going to be there. You're going to be stay before me. You son of a bitch. Yep. Uh, tsunami's coming. Like, it's going to be great. I can't wait. Uh, tsunami's a fabry. I love saying that name. I yeah, love that full awesome. name. I'm sorry. It's it's one of my favorites to say. Um, So I'm going to meet a bunch of people and I'm going to do a live stream. As long as my phone service is good, I figure I'll do like a half an hour live stream from there just so everybody can see us all together. And I'm going to wear. um. My Sunday best. I think I'm going to wear um, an elephant bikini. <laughs> or, <laughs> or just maybe my pink short shorts. Uh, you Show should go as... Wear the pink short shorts. You should go as Robert Incredible. Uh, no. So um, Robert is being fixed right now. Uh, because I try... Okay. So I tried to be funny with my kids. So I put on the suit and I ran out, but I kind of tripped. And when I tripped, I bent over and it split <laughs> up the ass crack. <laughs> so, oh no. So the, it's going to be fixed. And yeah, it's fine. It's just, gotcha. a, it's just a space man. It's suit. fine. Everything's fine. It's totally fine. Um, it's so, anyways, fine. when I come back from vacation, I'm going to be starting a Destiny raid team um, to be determined on the day. Uh, but I'm starting a raid team. Um, experience is going to be whatever it is. We're just looking for non-toxic. And as my number one rule comes, no douchebags. Can't oh, be a I'm out. Bag. I'm sorry. Well, Kogus, if you could play Destiny, I would definitely put you on the team because you helped, you helped me so much in swotor rating like you helped me start from the bottom and then i got there you know what i mean man um, i remember you as a story mode raider oof oof man you're oof. like what are we supposed to do here i was like marcus it's, you have to worry about the mechanic what mechanic this one that's a mechanic yes can't just blow through it oh marcus <laughs> you can't stand in the yellow puddle what yellow puddle the one you're standing in oh I didn't even notice that. Marcus, what buttons are you hitting? One and two and one and two and one and two. Do you know what a rotation is? No. Marcus, are you serious? I, I think, yes. listen, I think, I think I talked to Marcus before he even got his first MMO mouse. Wow. I think he was still a clicker when I talked to him. Yes. Yes. I was a clicker. Filthy clicker. That's something I still have to fight in mmos i have all the buttons mapped out and everything but i still have to fight the urge to click stuff it uh what my advice is it's like learning how to keyboard and mouse from a controller like if you're used to a controller keyboard and mouse for me took a month to really like get comfortable with it's like you have to do like hand stretches to like learn how to do it but once you do i can't ever go back now like I can never imagine not having an MMO mouse, even in destiny. Like all of my stuff is on my thumb. It's amazing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Oh yeah. hundred percent. In MMO, I walk with the mouse, two mouse buttons hold down. So my WASD was all my defensive cooldowns because I can't 
I can't do it all. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I know. I, dude, I don't know how you walk with the mouse. I use WASD. I don't know how. I you still, do it. I still use W to walk, and I and I point my direction with my, I hold my left clicker pretty much or my right clicker yeah. pretty much the entire time. I usually you do just that have to, You just have to have fast reaction in PvP. But I can't imagine like strafing with mouse. You can't. You don't strafe. What do you need to strafe for? You don't need to strafe at all in an MMO. You rotate. You rotate. You rotate your camera angle with the mouse, so there's no I strafing. Guess. I guess. Or, or I, I actually have my my strafing set as A and D. That's... So my camera angle is changing completely with just my mouse, that my was... my right click, and my scroll wheel. That was you know? uh, man. A was uh, Saber Ward, and D was uh, Cloak of Pain. I guess that's job. I guess that's the FPS gamer in me that needs to strafe left and right. Yeah, I don't even strafe in Destiny. So here's the thing in Swotor, your mo- your character actually moves slower when you jump with your space bar. So if you're PvPing and you're trying to get from one person to another person and you're jumping, you're you're actually slowing yourself down. That's funny. That's I mean, that's a good way to combat people just jumping all over the place yeah i don't know what i was getting at with that but that's just a random fact for the day no i um, appreciate the random spotor fact i'm gonna that's see if me. i can find it while i'm sitting here but uh the other th- so the hunt uh, is on so i am going on vacation as i've said so every time i go on vacation i need to buy a new switch game because I need something to play, right? The problem is, is I pretty much, I have a bunch of games, but what I've found is I can't just play anything, right? Because it has to be easy enough on the plane to where the, like my kids, um, like if they need something, I need to be able to pause it. Like I tried to play Breath of the Wild that was too much. It was like, I don't want to say too complicated because that's not the word. Um, but it was one of those things. What would you both suggest as a great Switch game that's easy to play on a plane? And don't say Mario Kart is excluded. Are Mario games in general excluded or just? No. Okay. I have Mario Kart and I have okay. Mario Party, but Mario Party is better with friends. Right. How long is the plane ride? Like two and a half hours. Okay. So, it's uh, so like this one, this one might be a little bit of a surprise for you. It's a, it's a much older game, and it was actually ported from the Wii U, because any good game from the Wii U era has been ported back to or to the Switch. Um, mm-hmm. Bayonetta and Bayonetta Two are yeah. both really awesome games. I played the original one. Games. Hold on, let me see. I might have it. You guys keep talking about the games because. Yeah. Uh, I want to see, but if I'm not mistaken, Bayonetta 2 will come with a, uh, or it comes with Bayonetta 1, I think. Or so at the least physical copy did, did, but I don't even think they have them on sale anymore. I got oh, it when it first, it, it was like a limited release. So if you've got that, uh, good job, because that might be a rare Switch game in the future yeah, I, or I, more well, so it was now. Dig, it was digital for me. So I just have the digital yeah. copies of the you know, oh, I, I got the physical copies. That's awesome. Yeah, Bayonetta is so, a great game. Yeah, I would say Bayonetta is actually a really fun game to play, and it and it hits that spot. Um, mm-hmm. I just don't know how well Marcus can play that. You know, around his kids, either they understand it or they don't get it. But you know, right? So might I have- be a little adult themed for them. So I try. I have the Baldur's Gate games. I was actually thinking about playing that because that's turn based, right? Um, I have Immortal Phoenix Rising, but like that's like Breath of the Wild. I can't do it. I was actually that I have Octopath Traveler. That seems like a good one. Um, I could play the Harul Warriors again. Um, I have Final Fantasy X or not? Uh, oh, twelve. Um, yeah. You know, I could play Diablo 
two. I have a bunch of games. Um, mm, Diablo's like a good one. Yeah, because like it just needs to like pass the time, right? Mm-hmm. All I what need about is- Metroid? It's too hard. Like I'm not good at. A I Metroid was gonna game. say Metroid's got mechanics. Yeah, like I have. Um, I've got a ton, but I feel like the, some of these games. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of these games are good. What is that one? Trials of Mana. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if you just want something that works, I think Bayonetta 2 would be a lot of fun if you had never played it. Right. Uh, you said Metroid was too hard. Well, Let's I see. like, uh, you know, so I tried to play Metroid the last time I flew. I couldn't do it. I tried to play like that Bloodstained. It's like the Castlevania Symphony of the Night sequel. I, it was too much. Like, it was too intense for me. What like, about the Lego Star Wars game on the Switch? So I was thinking about that, but my question is, is like, am I like, am I going to really like struggle to see what I have to do? Like what I liked about Bayonetta and like Hyrule Warriors is it's just, you're just going around slashing shit. That's it. Right. That's the whole mechanic. Just hit stuff. And I feel like anybody right. like on a plane button mashing would be fantastic. Cause like, I was also thinking like a turn based game, but is that going to be like, Meh. you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. The problem with turn-based game is that like, if your kids want to join you, they might get bored of it and you have to be like, well, now I have to play both characters because they got bored of the game and they don't want to play anymore. Well, they're not going to play. They're going to be like, or, and here's the other wild card. Or do I just bring my iPad pro, uh, my work one and play Knights of the old Republic. Cause I've been playing that. I just got off terrace. You know what I mean? So right. do I play Knights of the Old Republic just because it's classic and I love that game? What about this Witcher game? The Witcher 3. I'm 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 browsing Switch games. The Witcher I, 3 Wild Hunt Complete would, Edition. Yeah, I would never play that on the Switch. That game okay. is meant to be on a PC. Yeah, you need you need top tier graphics for that one. It's like At you need a 3090 or something on a computer. I've got one. So here's the, here's the all right. So here's here's the cheat code. Are you ready for this? I'm probably gonna sell my 3090 and get a 3090 Ti. Dang. Good luck. No, there. I got. The oh, hook. what about this? There's a Tony Hawk Pro Skater one and two for the Switch. I didn't even know they did this. Oh, Is it in physical form and only or in digital. It's a physical form. I'm sure they have a physical oh. copy of that. That remaster is really good. I played it. Hold on. Let's it's see. A, it yeah. Awesome. See if and, I order and it's on them. sale for 36 bucks. There it is. Save three dollars. Tony Hawk's game. A- when that came out, I played it until I got gold and everything. I like remember that. I played oh, that with man. cheats, like the first one. Man, I could I could hear that. Yep. That that the, that music. I don't know how it goes. Like I don't know how to verbalize it or make the sound. Like it's like yeah, exactly. Man. God damn it! I think oh, I think we found it with Tony Hawk Pro Skater, man. I think so too. There you go. That's it. Target T A R G E T Target dot com. Let's see if they have it. Tony, I'm sure Amazon has it. They, it'll get here Saturday. I'm leaving like oh, I'm leaving Sunday morning early. So, oh, uh, I wouldn't trust Ooh, it because if it in delays. stock thirty two ninety nine oh, in stock go. pickup ready for tomorrow. Only one left. Oh, oh my god! Swoop it. Yep. Doing swoop it. it. The right. it's like you two were made for each other. You and that copy. Right, listen, when that first ga- oh here, do you guys listen to Spotify? Yeah. Okay. I listen to you on Spotify. All right. Well, shout out to the Spotify listen, listeners. I'm going to give you guys the greatest gift ever. Somebody created the entire Spotify playlist of all the music in all of the Tony Hawk games. Oh, that's nice. Dude, that's I've been listening to that at work. It's amazing. Like, it just brings back all this n- nostalgia, huh? All of it. Anyways. So, well, we found the winner for the plane. In AIE news, Tuesdays are clan night for Destiny 2. 
Um, we've been rocking. We've been getting like eight to 10 people joining. It's been fantastic. Uh, we start at 9 p.m. Eastern. It's reset day, so that makes it a lot of fun. And there's enough stuff to do to keep everybody engaged. Uh, shout out to Lannis for suggesting that maybe we start doing like harder quests um, that are, you know, that you can't do with just one person to maybe receive an exotic gun. So when I get back from Florida, I think we're going to start doing that too. Maybe a couple of us break off and go do that. So listen, don't hesitate to join in on the fun. Get in on the fun. If all this sounds fun to you, go to AIE-Guild.org. Get our Discord info in the top right-hand corner. Ask for a Guild invite. Join the Discord. Chat with us. Check out all of the games we play. When I talk about all of the games, I'm talking LEGO Star Wars, Guild Wars 2, World of Warcraft, Eve, Lost Ark, Star Wars The Old Republic, Destiny 2, Diablo, Elder Scrolls Online. There are so many games that we play and there's so many different divisions. I promise there's some game in that discord that you play that we play and we would love to have you. So I know normally Nick definitely has to use the bathroom, but I'm sure Kogus and Atrex do. So we'll be right back. 150 episodes. Can you imagine that? I never did. I'm sure Nick never did. But 150 episodes. That's a lot of talking. Our first episode ever was the last Jedi review. Now, we all know that has its tipping points when you talk about it or polarization. But that was when we first started this show. Nick and I did the show for the first three years or two and a half years every other week, religiously. Every other Thursday, it was podcast day. We did that for a long time until this world got a pandemic. And when the world got a pandemic, we both decided that, listen, we need to do this every week. And more and more guests. More and more conversations, more and more banter between the both of us. What's magic about that is this podcast was created from us just talking about the things that we like to talk about and having the most epic conversations at work at the time when Nick worked for me. And no, he didn't get fired. He grew up. And we had lots of laughs at work. And that's where this show came from. So now, four and a half years later, 150 episodes, Nick is living his dream right now, playing in a national paintball tournament with the best of the best around the world. So yes, he's not here to yell at me on the other side and tell me to suck less, but I'm going to do us justice today. So. I just want to thank some people for what you have done for working class nerds and how many people have come on this show and chatted with me and Nick, or as we call it, the village idiots, right? Our first episode was just us on episode six. We had dent episode eight, Dr. Gameology episode 10. Brian from the Bad Feeling Podcast, which was a charity podcast guest host, because that's what he called it. We had Al, then Ted from State of the Old Republic Podcast. Ari came on, my nemesis, great friend, Albus. Dent came back. Bishop, Sakari, Max and Sima. <laughs> I actually, on episode 20, had a meltdown, I guess. Scrubland Shad, Dent Again, Utini Cast. Episode 25 was our first live episode. And that's the day that we realized the live episodes aren't for us. Then we had Derek Brinkman, who was the lead producer of Legends of Aria. Dr. Gameology came back. 
Nazir came on. Eric Musco came on on episode 29 for the first time. Episode 31, we had Al and Dent. Then we had B Cavs. Then there was episode 33, which is our one year celebration. Brian and Zen, Nazir again. Then we had our first time that we threw an entire AIE takeover for episode 36. We had Max, Sima, Tetsami, and Dan Kinia. Oh, who can't forget episode 37 with Lady Ran and Kogus for the soft taco talk? Then we had the Sith Talk podcast guys on. Ari came back. Episode 40, John Redden came on. Number 44, Arian Dent came on. Number 46, Nick Irafino. He made Norman's Night in the Cave. Episode 47, Medulla in his ear. Wow. Episode 50, all it says was party time. Episode 51, Eric Musco decided he wanted to come back and he brought a friend, which was Matt Pusevich. Episode 52 was good old Intasar. This week in Orbish, great friend, awesome dude. Intasar, you rock. 53, we had Bo and Corvinus. 54, Kogus. 55, Kogus and Dr. Gabology came back. 56, we had Holly Fields. Come on, she voiced Nadia Grill. Episode 58, Slayer came on. Episode 59, we had Driggsy. Driggsy is a Twitch streamer, awesome dude, just a great friend. Um, Episode 61, we reviewed The Rise of Skywalker. Number 62, Dr. Gameology came back. Man, I think Doc might hold the, real, the rule for the most hosts. Number 64, Jackie Cow came on. Jackie is a former uh, Bioware developer and now works for Gearbox. Episode Oda 66, Intasar came on again. Kogus, Rut. The Death Star Troopers for episode 69. That was our entire raid team came on the show. Episode 7, 70, Dr. Gameology again. 71, Sith Lord Britt. 72, Jackie Cow. 73, now we can't ever forget this. Kogus and Glitch. Man, that was one crazy conversation. Number 74, Cat and Ven. Number 75, Fezgig. Number 76, we went live on Twitch. <laughs> oh, who can forget episode 77? We had Dr. Raven Court himself from the University of Coruscant podcast. 78, Feta came on. 79, Sith Lord Brit. Number 80, Averia. Number 83, Dr. Ravencourt came back. 85, we had Greybog and Nicodus from the uh, Star Trek podcast. 86, Kitty came on for the first time. 87, J Muscleman. 88, Mr. Intasar came back. 89, Ted from the State of the Old Republic came back. 91, Lucy. 92 was the first episode with Chimera. 94, Max and Seema. 95, Chill and Kitty from Utidicast. 96, Kogus. 98, Kitty. 99, Feta and Al. One. Hundred episodes, Max and Sima. One hundred one, Moxie came on. One hundred two, Jackie Cow. One hundred three, Kogus. One hundred four, we had first time guest Serp and Chimera with the surprise join in. Number one hundred five, Atrax. Number one hundred six, Arminestra. Armin Esther is a voice actress, a real actress, and a uh, streamer. 
awesome. 107, Kitty. 108, Kogus. 109, Sage came on from Uplink Podcast. 110, Chronic came on. And he was drinking his orange spritzer, whatever it was, with an alcohol content of like 3.3. Number 111, Lore Seeker on YouTube and Warrior Nerd as I knew him. 113, it was just good old me and Doc. 114 was Rayu. 115 was Amish Ace. 116 was Mac Daddy. 117 was Kitty. 118 was Declan. Streamer from across the pond. 119, Chill came on. 121, Vel and Intisar. 122, Oh No Plays slash Creates. Kogus came back. Tabs came on for the first time in 124. 125 was Stay Alive. 126 was Chimerian Atrax. 127 was Doritos. 128 was Randy. 129 was Nick and Feta. I was sick as a dog. 131, Kitty came back. 132, Dan Bly came on. Who can forget the Christmas episode with Storm and Norman for episode 134? 135, Dr. Gameology came back. 136, SM Playboy came back or came on for the first time. 137, Serp came back. 138, we had the honor of meeting Gator and Hazel from Guardian Downcast. And still to this day, I still get to play Destiny with them, and they're just awesome. Number 140, Max and Seema. 141, it was the Kitty Litter Podcast, which we had Kitty Kisses and Kitty Treats. Wow, there's a lot of people. Number 142, we had Out of Body. 143 was Ben and Cat. 144, Doritos came back. 145 was the infamous live episode, kind of live, like partial live with Kymiri when he drove down to Nick's apartment. Number 146, The Real Marcus B Gaming came on. Could The Real Marcus B please stand up? Marcus B Gaming stands up. 147 was Tom Tom TV. One forty eight was us. One forty nine was free ride games. And then one fifty was Kogus and good old A Tracks. What I'm trying to say here to everybody is that this has been one wild, wild ride. And it's it's unbelievable to me how many people have come on this show. And it blows me away every time because you think about all of the people that have come on this show, all the people that have influenced us. And I can't thank them enough because this podcast doesn't happen without all of you. With that said, everybody, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. I can't, I really can't thank you enough. Nick is shooting his paintball gun in Dallas, Texas, and he's thanking you too. This has been one wild ride. I'm looking forward to having all the new guests on. We're looking forward to chatting with each one of you. If you want to come on the show, don't be afraid to DM me on Twitter or in the Discord. Don't forget to join the Nerds Community Discord. Thank you, and may the force be with you. And we're back. So today, 
We're going inside Kogus's head. He is not wearing a maid's outfit yet. And we're discussing SWOTOR's 7.0.2 point. I don't understand all the points update. But so the big update that came out for SWOTOR this week was the weapons outfitter has been finally released. Finally, Woo-hoo. it's here. Sorry. All right, so any da, 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 da. lightsaber, blaster, anything in the game, you can now save and use, and it doesn't matter what it is. Now, for all the people out there that bought the SWOTOR Digital Deluxe Bundle can use that lightsaber that was in it because now you can use it because there was no mods in the game up until now. So now the weapons outfitter is released. The new customization functionality is now live. You can now have one weapon or weapons for dual wield and combat styles. Like everybody should be playing a Marauder. We all know that equipped with, which will determine the stats applied to your character and stamp the appearance of another weapon of the same type via the outfitter. More information later. They're bringing back another double XP event. So if you've been dying to buy another character slot and level another character from 1 to 80, now is your time. You have starting May 3rd and lasting until May 10th. So guess what? On May the 4th, be with you. You can create a pub character but don't worry everybody because on revenge of the fifth you can make a real character which is on the empire side anyways um so there's going to be a week long of double xp and you're going to be able to get double xp and double valor what what is valor i still don't know valor valor is like um it is your experience that comes with PvP. You get titles that come with it, and you actually have to have a certain level of valor to actually queue up for ranked PvP. Not very high. Oh, I see. Uh, but it's like level twenty. But you're right? also able to unlock. You're you're able to unlock. It. The more important thing is you get titles. Uh, you get like the gladiator, and then you get the battle master. And then you get Draft Warlord, Master. and then you get the you get all the other ones, Elite Warlord. Um, so it's all these other ones. It's and like a double PVP XP. Rating. It's not. It's not really rating because you earn it whether you win or lose. Okay, gotcha. So you just earn it, and it's a track. Interesting. Um, and then yeah, so Valor Valor's it's cool because you're able to unlock like you ha- you have to actually some of the old PVP gear you actually had to have like a certain level of valor to put on. So the old battle master, you remember that? Oh, what is it? The, like the, the, the reavers, uh, the one that looks like the Marauder, the spiky armor set in the game. Yeah. Like Darth Maul. That one. Uh, yeah. Darth Mars outfit. That one, what required actual battle master or re- required valor to put on. And then people liked it so so much that they ended up putting, a different version of it on the cartel market because people didn't want to grind out the valor for it because you need valor level 40 or 60 or something like that to put on that gear. So there's some gear, some old, old, old gear that you would need valor for to put it on and the titles. And then you can get uh, mounts or crystals depending on your valor. That's mainly, I mean, that's way back when you can get most of those color crystals via cartel market nowadays. So things you things you don't need to know in SWOTOR. Huh. Well, you do need to know it if you want to play ranked PvP, because when I dabbled my toes in ranked PvP, I had one I had one character that could do it, and then I switched characters to try to do it on a different character, and I didn't have the valor. And I had Marcus, to get to you like, didn't dabble your toes in the water of ranked PvP. You dove in head first on the shallow end. Let's just let's just say what it was. It was awesome. I made so many toxic people miserable, and <laughs> it just proved that people are just unhappy. 
What were you going to oh, say? Man. I cringed. I cringed so hard when you were doing that. But you have to say it had took balls to do it. Like I did fine. And you know what that was awesome is as mad as these players were, the people in my chat that were ranked PVP players were helping me. Oh, absolutely. At better. They're like, Marcus, you need to make sure you do this. You need to make sure that you do this. And by the end of the night, I was holding my own for about a minute. Yeah, absolutely. That is something that's actually been really cool over the past season. Uh, a lot of ranked players uh, that enjoy enjoy playing ranked have been saying, you know what? We need to change our approach to the ranked community because everybody being toxic to the new players slowly kills off ranked PvP. And so what ends up happening is there's no more ranked players because there's no new blood and the old players are like, well, I'm tired of ranked PvP. So uh, that's something that's actually really fun to see is the change in the attitude of the player base for ranked. I mean, yeah, you still get your angry bad apples, but there's definitely been a lot of voices out there that have been saying, you know what, let's work on getting helping people out and getting them a better experience like what you got versus what i got my first year of ranked pvp well let's just be honest so in the beginning of the night i actually had to ban like seven people from my chat like it was like insta ban they came in they found out i was streaming and they like the toxicity that came out like the mods were in full force that night like banning people but once we banned like seven people some of the people in the chat, like it got so bad that I remember guys were slash stucking when we were waiting for the match to start because they would rather stuck it than play with me. And yeah, that's a I, I shame. Was like, yeah. And I was just like, whatever, I'm going to play like you're lost, dude. And. But like some of the people that came in my chat were like, dude, do this. You need to push Saber Ward. The second the fight starts, Saber Ward. Then you need to do this. And they're like, don't you know your class? Yes, I know my class. Do you know it for PvP? Fuck, no, I don't. But I want to do this. And and after them saying that, you know, I should really practice, the truth of the matter is this. In the game, I think if SWOTOR wants to invest in ranked PvP, there should be a arena Q, like have your regular PvP Q that like Chimeri does, but then you should have an arena Q that's like preseason all the time for ranked. So like guys like me, I could go into the ranked Q, uh, unranked, ranked practice, we'll call it, ranked practice Q and learn how to play the objectives there. And then once I feel like I'm ready, then join ranked PvP and not look like such an idiot. But we're never going to get that. So moving <laughs> on. So what else came out in this wonderful uh, giant update that we've been so excited for? So there have been a lot of changes. I'm going to kind of just breeze over them because some of the majority of them actually don't interest me I, I, or affect me i should say they renamed the end game mats okay um moving on from that i mean it's it's pretty easy to understand them you'll you'll see where they came from there's no reason to go over it eventually uh you're gonna just know them as they are they fix names on stuff uh they updated they updated some classes so things actually work like they're supposed to. They also, the, do we talk about the break that happened? Uh, we'll I don't know break. if we want to talk about the break just we'll break. yet. We'll, we'll hold off. We'll hold off on that with the, how they broke the game. Apparently my juggernauts, my jugs are broken. Oh no, you can't fucking skip over that. They no, broke. But, uh, hold on, hold on. We'll get to the end first and then we'll talk about that. All right, all right. Uh, the big, the, the two biggest changes that I really like are the story mode bosses are the the raid bosses now drop more tech frags and they've made oems rpms cheaper via tech frags so you can start crafting your 300 level augments much easier so they're not going to be over inflated price of over a billion credits that's a good plus 
Yeah, anytime um, that you can combat economy, it's good for a game. Right. So they're not going to be super expensive because I was actually crafting 300 augments and making a billion credits, you know, as soon as I crafted. Well, I was making like 3 billion because I would craft one and it would crit two times. So I'd have three Five augments. Billion. Yes. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, and then they added, they finally, listen, they have finally, finally, finally added losses count towards your daily and your weekly and regs and ranked PVP. So that is I a mean, really good change. So if a that is drives, a change that should have never been needed. Well, of course, I am so upset. As soon as I heard that news, I was like, why are we doing that? There's no reason well, to do that. I remember Don't take happened. away losses from this. Right. Well, you're creating toxicity. So if Atrax and I are new PvP players and we're jumping into a game, regular PvP, and there's Cocos, seasoned PvP player, and he's like, I just need one more win to finish out my weekly and I can go to bed, right? Cues up in a match. He gets two shitters like me and Atrax at Swotor PvP, and we get our asses whooped. Now, this dude is mad that he didn't get his weekly Next thing you know, he's rage raging at us because we're so bad and we shouldn't queue for PvP, blah, blah, blah. Now, I'm not saying it would be that bad, but it is that oh, bad. Oh, no, it got that bad. Don't get me wrong. It got that bad. It, people were standing outside of the map or as far as from the action as they could, and they would just be keyboard warriors and just say, you guys need to just let them win so this game can be over. I need to get – I need another match. I need a new team. It, it was terrible. It was terrible. I mean, they, you want to say you're trying to get rid of toxicity? That just really promoted a cesspool of toxicity. And it took them two years to change that. And that was something players and, and PvP players and PvP content creators, not just myself, who were like, don't do this change. Do not make it wins only that is not good and now it took them two years to do that come on the i i i i'm very frustrated that it took them that long i'm glad that it, they finally did it but they've i wonder how much of the population doesn't pvp anymore because of that change because of that one singular change that i was advocate about not implementing two years ago and now they're finally reverting back to it i am upset that they didn't listen but i don't i don't get paid for those decisions so there's that um well, and sometimes that's I about that, it sometimes i don't think they're getting paid to make the decisions <laughs> i i think they're just like I, I don't know at what point if you have a toxicity problem in pvp already taking away wins like w making win requirements that's only like that's somebody going oh i think that's a good idea people are going to like that change say what you're just creating more toxicity the thing absolutely I, and you know i saw something in a tweet back a ways a while ago and it was like it doesn't matter what you do in pvp you're not going to get kicked out unless you're cheating you can say whatever you want. You'll never get kicked out of the game. So oh, man. Let's not even say that much because ranked season, season 14 was the worst ranked season for Star Wars The Old Republic. I am going to say that. I would love to make a video about it. I hate that I would have to do that because nobody wants to say this was terrible. It was the worst season for ranked PvP for not just one reason, not just two reasons, for multiple Layers upon layers of reasons, right? They started the season off without the full map pool. They took out Mandalor uh, Mandalorian Battle Ring, and they took out Orbital Station. Orbital Station being one of the core maps in the game. Now, for a lot of people, that may not be a big deal. For me as a main Juggernaut player, for anybody who played a class that was the first target, that was a huge deal. And I could go into the, the reasons for this. And I will because I have a microphone and you're giving me the ability to do it. Heck yeah. This so, is like, listen, at the end of the day, these things need to be talked about. And I'm not, I mm -hmm. raid in SWOTOR, right? I don't do PVP. So hearing this perspective right. 
is a good so, thing. Yep. What ends up happening is in in PvP for Star Wars: The Old Republic in in these arenas, there's a lot of arenas that are flat, and those flat arenas they're really hard to escape your enemies, right? Because they have a lot of they have a lot of area to see where you're going. There's there's not a place to the line of sight, which is hiding, turning a corner, so nobody can leap to you, so nobody can just do a straight line shot at you, right? Uh, two maps that that's really easy on is Tatooine. There, there's a way to kite around Tatooine. It's just not the way you would think. And there is Corellia Square. Corellia Square is one of the most open maps you can fight on. As a primary target, as, a, as and I'm not even saying as a juggernaut, I'm saying as a primary target, you only have one out of four people to go for. You're the primary target. You're the one that they want to kill first. You have to do anything you can so that you stay alive as long as you can. In those maps, there's not a lot to do. You have to intercede to a teammate. You have to run to somebody. You have to, you know, phase walk out. There's not a lot of things you can do to the other team to help you out. In Mandalorian Battle Ring, in Orbital Station, a good time force push is glorious, okay? For example, everybody likes to go fight up top on the top rafters, on the top floor when you go up there. Why? Mm -hmm. Because if I open up on a juggernaut and I find somebody else to target, or if there's a healer or a tank, and they don't have anything that's going to prevent them from being pushed, I can force push them from the top to the bottom. And that takes them out of the fight. That essentially turns that fight into a 3v4 in my team advantage for about 8 seconds. That's, about, that's a good 5 GCDs times 4 people. And that's that person got force pushed off second and a half. He can't do anything. Has to find the ramp, oriented, orientate himself, and then get back up the ramp and then start to re-engage however he can. That time that it takes for him to re-engage is vital for a player like me who is the primary target because that means I don't have to pop a defensive cooldown because I knocked down a DPS. Or that means that we force more defensive cooldowns from their main, from our target and I'm able to kind of stay alive and I'm able to kind of kite. Now, here's the other thing is that when I need to kite on an orbital station, I can jump down because I have that X access to go across. I don't have, I don't have, I'm not just flat. I can go down. And that lets me line of sight people. That lets me go around. That lets me do so much, which is why I love Mandalorian Battle Ring and I like Orbital Station. Now, in other games that where you have competitive gameplay, StarCraft 2 comes to mind for me. In StarCraft 2, you have map selection or map uh, veto, right? You can veto up to X amount of maps. If you have a 55 win percent, we're only going to do a 5% difference here. 55 win percent on a map, and you have a win percent of 45% on another one. I didn't think it was a big deal. I was like, why would I want to use map vetoes? You know, what's so what? But then I looked at it, and I was like, wait a second. That's a 10% difference in between those two maps right. why would i want to play a map where i have a five percent or a ten percent more chance to lose versus a map where i can actually win so i can't i can't actually see the stats because sotor's website doesn't go in depth like starcraft 2's does and tells you your win percentage against uh other classes and other races and your win percentage in other maps but you kind of start to get a feel for what maps you do well in. And Orbital Station and Mandalorian Battle Ring were one of my two better maps because I could kite on those maps and I could LOS. Mm -hmm. So that was the first. And that's just, that's what, a five-minute rant about the first blunder of the season? Right. <sighs> and so, go ahead. From my perspective, I, I hear you talk about these, you know, all these different level designs and how they interact with the with the classes and what you have to do personally. And when I, when I hear that, cause I'm, you know, I played a ton of SWOTOR and then I kind of stopped because, you know, PVP hasn't super interested me and I've, you know, mostly a PVE story player, which I really think so far as a casual player is where the game shines. And if you compare that PVP experience to some of the others, for other MMOs, you know, it's 
I I have high hopes for the SWOTOR team, you know, that they can kind of re help reevaluate these PVP maps, things of that nature, because it sounds like for now that's what a majority of the community is, you know, is is people like yourself who are, you know, hardcore PVP players. Yeah. Absolutely. I, the thing about it Go ahead, is, Marcus. No, no. The, what I was going to say is the thing is, is I believe if you're going to have ranked PVP, every map should be available. Just like Call of Duty, right? Put They put every map available, right? Sure. If you have a a map in the rotation that people don't like, it's still in the rotation, but you could put it at a less of a percentage to win, right? Where, right. But restricting players from maps, because I'll be honest, when, when you restrict somebody from getting Nuketown and that is their favorite map, now they're, percentages of winning might go down because they're not playing their favorite map. And when you restrict people from playing anything, once they're put restrictions on you, people stop going. Right? Right. Well, they were saying they were, they took those maps out because they were saying they needed to get rid of desync. That was their reasoning. That's the same reason why Vanden got taken out as well. For the most part, Vanden and uh, Questball were both taken out. Um, for the most part, I guess they're kind of fixed. I mean, these, these things still happen. It's not as bad as it was. But, yeah. it it They should have never started the ranked PvP season with those two maps out. Because, here we go. Here's another reason why the season was terrible. It was 11 months long. 10 or 11 months long. They previously have stated, we want to have shorter seasons. We want to have seasons go from four to six months. 11, 10, 11 months is uh, not a little bit over six months. So they still had time to just not start the ranked PVP season. Right. So that's, that was a, that's, that's, that's another thing that happened this season in ranked PVP. Just too long of a season. Yes. Well, I, I'm now I'm going to look at it as seasons go, right? The destiny season is like three months. And that's their season. And then they move on. I don't know if destiny has a ranked PVP, but what I'm saying is, is they, their seasons last, I think three months where you should, that's how you keep it fresh. But again, I feel like, when a season goes on too long, people stop playing it. Cause like as soon as the rank season comes, people are in it. They're playing because they want to get the rank. They want to play the games. But as time goes on, they're like, why am I continuing to do this? I've already hit my rank on five characters. Yeah. And it so just comes down to development, honestly, and rewards, right? Like if, I feel like they can't produce rewards fast enough to be able to shorten the season what it to, should actually be. And I don't know what it takes to make a reward because I'm no developer, right? I just think the proof is in the pudding. Yes. 100%. But either way, I think uh, we're going to circle back. I think that them taking out lo like losses didn't count and putting that back in the game is a good thing for the community and the soul of the game. Cause now but I wonder how many how many people will say it's too little too late. It's been two years. Here's Gotta remember thing. this game is ten years old, two years. That's twenty percent of the lifespan. Well eighty percent of the lifespan we had that. So well, I really want to see how I wish I could see that those metrics because that was something that i would have been like hey don't do that that's a bad idea don't do that and then be like well whoops well i think okay so i'm gonna play that game with you a little bit more so 
I think the people that have left the game because of the PVP changes are not coming back. Absolutely not. All right. So I'll give, I'm not shouting out anybody's name. There was a streamer and he streamed only SWOTOR. When the content dried up and he was waiting for the expansion, he switched games. Okay. And since he switched games, he hasn't come back because he's like, look at, I'm playing a game that I'm enjoying a lot. And I'm not talking about myself, right? For me, when a, if I was a PvP -er and I'm like, well, I think these things suck and they did suck. And now you're saying the last season was the worst they ever had. If you're a ranked PvP player, why wouldn't you go play a different game and start trying their PvP? So that's that's kind of where SWOTOR has, has a very unique PvP aspect to it. Your white bar mechanic is, is something that I've never... When people talk about white bar being different, I don't know what that is. And then they explain to me that... There is no white bar in WoW. There is, there are like, you know, your effects become less and less effective as your match goes on, but there's no effective white bar, which is essentially the central mechanic of stuns and CCs and uh, in and solo ranked. In group ranked, it is the primary mechanic that you work around. Right, your white bar is if you don't understand it's your resolve. It's the mechanic in which you get stunned or CC'd. Once you have a certain, once you hit a certain stun or CC ratio within a small amount of time, you hit a white bar, and your white bar means you can't get stunned or CC'd. If you are a tank or a healer, you know you want to make sure you don't use your CC break in order to help somebody on your team because they're going to try to um, bait you to use that or to use that and then try to kill one of your teammates. I mean, this is going deep into the deepest mechanics of it. Well, sure, but... You want to I... try to get your, your, your stuns off and hit both the tank and the healer and to do as much damage as you can to the DPS and cause them, force them to use a defensive cooldown. Once that defensive cooldown's used, you have to wait around and keep swapping targets off a guard and then when you're ready for to reuse your uh, stuns or somebody else is ready to follow up on it, you have to do uh, you have you do that again and you force another DCD. You're not going to kill a good ranked group team in the first minute. It's going to take a good two and a half minutes to start doing it because you have to wither down their defensive cooldowns and you have to force people to use their CC break. That is probably one of that is what makes games so sweaty because you're talking to three other people and you're talking about what CC am I about to use? Do I need a hard stun? Do I need to force push? Who am I doing this on? Where do I go? Who am I attacking? This is all going on within seconds and this is changing every second and a half to two seconds. Swap, guard swap, guard swap, guard swap. You know, as a tank, I was just constantly guard swapping and interceding. Guard swap, guard one person, intercede to the other person. Make sure they're not using a defensive cooldown because my intercede is supposed to act as that short-term defensive cooldown. I used a CC break at the wrong time. Cool. The other team just saw me do that. They're going to use the next CC on me. I can't do anything about it. I'm literally going to stand next to my teammate and watch him die. That is what makes the game so sweaty. And I'm, I, I don't know. You guys can't see it. But, like, my hands are sweating just from remembering all this stuff from ranked PvP because it's so intense. You're in there. You're what? in voice with all these people to get all of that coordinated, and the other team is doing the exact same thing. Oof. All you listeners better appreciate how fired up Kogus is right now. Yeah. But, you know, but that's passion, and that's somebody that knows how to play it. So, like, when I complain about a bug being in a raid or me jumping off a cliff because I didn't know it was there or it was bugged out. It's the same shit. But at the end of the day, I think the people that play it, you think it might be because of the white Mario mechanic. I don't actually think so. I think people are obsessed with having a lightsaber and two blasters and being dressed up like the Mandalorian. Yep. And that's why they play it. No matter how bad the PVP is or the state of PVP, because it's actually, believe it or not, when I played Swotor PVP, it was actually fun. Right. But I think the most part is that people are obsessed with just the fact of that they're playing their Star Wars story and 
and then you throw in the PvP and it makes it that much more fun. Yeah. That's but the I, initial appeal to a majority of players, right? Because a majority of players are casuals. They're not going to be the high level right. rank. They're not going to be the Koguses, you know, they're not super epic. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the, the not super epic. That might be the initial appeal. If you get into ranked PvP or if you just get into PvP in general and you start to understand those mechanic sets, that's the part that ends up keeping a lot of people in there just because those they're they're so unique. But that's the, those are two, those are a couple of, I don't want to say two, those are a couple of the reasons why PvP is awesome. Uh, the other one would be, oh man, the, the, the way, another reason why this season was so bad was because the way they dealt with toxicity or their lack of actions against toxic players. Um, we saw, we saw an abundance of toxicity an abundance of just unwilling to play, you know, just like we were talking about earlier where people would just not engage in the map. They would slash stuck it, not because somebody was bad like you, Marcus, but because they didn't ah. like somebody on their team. Literally, I don't like me, you. Though. I'm not going to do this. Yeah, but that's what they did. They would just slash stuck because they were cued with me. But here's something. Exactly. Else. But see, this is what, made me realize why toxicity happens okay i queued for ranked uh, i queue for destiny pvp every time i queue i play with different people when i played ranked pvp i was queuing with the same let's say 10 people over and over and over and over again and i'm like is there only 10 people playing this fucking game because like I'm getting stuck with the same people and then they're like, not this person again, slash stuck. And they're just laid dead for the whole match. And they would rather do that than play the actual game. Yeah. And I'm like, at what point is it more fun to die than play the game? And how small is that pool if I'm playing against these guys or girls that every time I play with them, they're just stucking themselves or the rants. It's a small pool these days. It's a very small pool compared to what it was before. Yes. I wonder why. When and you if, have lack of like, when was the last time a real PVP map came out? Like that Vanden Hutball or whatever it was, or Odessin. Like that was like eight years ago. Maybe not that far. Four years ago. Like, that's not acceptable. Like, there's a team that works on PvP. Make a new fucking map. Like, bring some excitement into it. Because like I said at the beginning of the show, the only people that are excited for SWOTOR 7.0 expansion that I've seen are the PvPers. Everybody else is just doing the gear grind because that's what there is to do. And it's a long gear grind. I actually didn't think it was that bad for PvP. Well, no, because your guys aren't chasing that max, 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 max level. Everybody who's yeah, Raiders right. wants all the nightmare gear. And in order to get the nightmare gear, you got to get the nightmare gear. So they got to go for the nightmare gear. Where in PvP, your your rank isn't that high because they wanted it to be achievable so that people that play PvP could get to max level quick so that they could compete with each other. They didn't want right. that giant gear grind because then it would it would break the game even more than it is. Right. I don't think uh, PvP... So, I think PvP peaked in SWOTOR. I want to say Season 8 through 11, almost. They did, a, they did a lot of changes in Season 10 that might have brought it down. But the, they needed to change the matchmaking system from Season 9 to Season 10. They had a lot of issues... But uh, the worst, the worst season for me was season twelve, and I think for anybody who really, if I see a juggernaut that has gold rating from season twelve, my hats off to them, because season twelve was the launch of six point oh. Six point oh was probably the worst time to be a juggernaut, because they didn't, we didn't have grit teeth, we didn't have, uh, uh force bound available. Those were like the two main things you needed as a juggernaut, and. They they weren't available. You had uh, to wait for them to come around on Kai Zaiken. I think it took them like eight months to finally release them from Kai Zaiken so you can craft them. 
And by that time, the season was pretty much three quarters of the way done. It, it was a really bad season. It's definitely a low point for me uh, in PvP. From season 8 to season 11, I, I had hit gold at least on one tune. Season 12 broke that streak. Uh, didn't get it again in season 14. Uh, season 14, it wasn't my goal. Season 13, it wasn't even my goal. But the other issues was, like I said, they did not get do anything about the toxicity. In season 13, they were like, hey, these people are abusing Vote Kick. And, you know, we can clearly see it on my stream that I was getting I was getting vote kicked when we were going to lose because I would be the first target. I would be dead. My two teammates were two were two toxic players and they would vote kick me out of the match and then they would kill their uh their friend on the other team or the other person would finally die from acid. You know, but they took care of that in season 13. They cared back in season 13. You know, and you went from season 13 being a good, decent season, not the best, not the worst, but it was a good season. It was on track and much better than season 12. Right. And, you know, I was like, okay, cool. We're back to return to form. And then they didn't do anything in season 14 for any of these toxic players. But, you know, you had people. Well, again, I'm going to go back to it and I'm sorry to cut you off. It's it comes when when that happens, there's two things. They either don't care, which I know they do care, right? Or they don't have the personnel to police. That's the problem. I think I think in the state of the game, there is or the world, there's a lack of developers developing the game for whatever their reason being. And because of it, you know, the the game is hurting for it. And like you said, the shit that I heard that those people were saying to me via like chat. And then even once I left the queue and I was just on like the fleet, people were finding me continuing to berate me. Like I had to legacy block people. So yeah, either way, and the whole dude, they even messed up legacy block. I'm going to take this another step further. They screwed up legacy block because when they say, Oh, you are now ignoring blank legacy. They don't tell you the character name. You, they should have just said you are ignoring blank characters name legacy. Because here is the thing: was I had tunes that I would play ranked PvP on incognito. They wouldn't be Kogus. They wouldn't be any. The only thing that you might think it was me was that I had the same gear except for a main hand. I went as far as changing my main hand to to throw people off and to have looks that weren't my normal looks on my tunes so that I could play ranked PVP on tunes that people didn't know were me when I wasn't streaming because that's how much I played ranked PVP in season 13. As soon as they brought in legacy ignore, they screwed me over because what people would do would be like, Oh, who's this other player? We don't know who this is. Legacy ignore. Oh, that's Kogus's legacy guys. That's Kogus. And now I am no longer incognito on any of those tunes because they screwed up that legacy ignore. Well, I don't okay. know if you guys knew that or not. Well, that I, really no, screwed over that's, ranked that's PVP. Pretty for me. shocking, actually. Yeah, but yeah. At, at the same time, so I understand both sides of the coin because on the other side of the coin, if somebody is really bad to somebody and they like need to get rid of them, they could just create another, have another character, and they could just parade them again so it's kind of a catch-22 i understand you're well, getting all you have run. to do i'm not saying don't have it legacy ignore don't have them say the name of the legacy that you're ignoring yeah don't you know, give up if my if my if my two name is marcus b say i you are now ignoring marcus b's legacy instead of saying you are ignoring b814 legacy b814 because that's what they did that's a sweet legacy name yeah. yeah, it's a sweet um, Twitch name, man. You should combine the two. Uh, so anything else in 7.0.2 that stuck out to you as an update? Or is it really just bug fixes? It's it's fixes and, and the lack of fixes. Uh, we still don't have augments fixed in PvP. If you guys didn't know right now, augments aren't working in PvP. Uh, for the, so if you're talking about not worrying about a gear grind, you also don't need to worry about augments working. So your alacrity threshold and your accuracy threshold, if you go for either of those two stats, you cannot get those hitting with your 
augments because they are they have augments disabled right now. Uh, 7.0.2 was supposed to implement an attempted fix, I believe, uh, but it did not, from what I understand. It's only been out for a few days, and I didn't really check yesterday. I was just, I've kind of been lackadaisy with it, with regs. I just want to PvP. I'm not really worried about how big I'm hitting unless it's, you know, in a negative impact where, you know, I was like, why am I getting 320 gear when my 306 gear works better? I'm going to stick to my 306 gear for a while. And then they finally fixed it. I was so sad. I loved being min-max in 306. Um, oh, God. So that that also stuck out as a not fix for PvP. So even as you're saying all this, uh, yeah, I still enjoy PvP in swotor in 7.0.2 i'm still enjoying playing juggernaut i'm still actually going to probably play um rage and i actually that you bring up a good point they said that uh aoe's aren't properly working or they weren't properly working i think they might be fixing them something was going on with an operations thing and they said they fixed it they did a hot fix on it but it messed up all aoe's which means vengeance juggernauts we're not doing any damage to anybody but their one wait, wait, target, wait, wait. which means what you just ouch. said is they you're you cannot do AOE damage or AOEs. So you can't AOE taunt, you can't AOE heal, you can't AOE damage. Like, oh my god! Like, I, I'm sorry. Here's where I. This is where I'm not a game developer and I don't understand it. But like, you would think after ten years of doing something. You wouldn't. I make think they fixed it. I think they fixed it. There is a, there is an official dev post that says we're seeing reports of issues occurring with AOEs not working as intended in operations. After about uh, after the above fix, it was deployed. The team is looking into what could be causing this. We'll keep you updated. Uh, the issue with boss targeting was functioning within operations. So, I guess I just don't understand game development, and it's got to be really yeah, hard. AOE fix should now be working. Yeah, they 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 said it should be working correctly. Uh, they had to revert uh, in order for a they had to revert boss targeting fix in order for AOEs to work. So they fixed it, but there was a time when you know it didn't work. Have for they a given, little bit today? Have they given an update on when the new operation is being released? Um. You know, it's like that part in Titanic. It's been 84 years, and it feels like it was yesterday. Yeah, I, I have no idea when the operation is supposed to come out. Um, okay. Great question. I like that question. That's a really good question. Thanks, Moscow. Um, no problem. <laughs> you know, for me, I've decided that when I come back, in the new operation, I'm coming back in 306 gear and I'm jumping right into story mode R4. And I'm going to go like crazy. And I'm going to try it and we'll see how it feels. Um, Because, man, I really love raiding and I'm eager to see what this five boss encounter looks like. I'm really curious what it's going to look like, too, because I still raid every once in a while. You raid once a week. Twice a week. Thank you. Oh, see, twice I'm slowly. A week. Listen, I'm doing that 330 gear grind. I'm just taking it at a very lax pace. I think that. Well, hey, guess what? There's no need to rush because there's no there's no plans for an update because Charles Boyd today just announced that they started voice acting for the next story piece. So. I don't know if they do the content first and then do the voice acting or do they do the voice acting first and then do the game development. I don't know. But hooray, more voice acting happening. So I would say if we're end of April, let's For say. For all the listeners, that's just Marcus's thoughts, not mine. I, I don't have anything to do with those thoughts specifically. What are you talking about? What? What thoughts? <laughs> I'm just that—that that is all you there. That is you, Marcus. There. What are you talking about? What I'm still I trying say? to say on on PvP. Oh, I just want more story. Like I play, I play Star Wars to play the story. I want to play my Marauder story, and I want to be the most powerful Sith on the planet. 
or in the galaxy, I mean. You, you know can't I mean? be the most powerful Sith on the planet. You're playing a Marauder instead of a Jug. Yeah, well, a Jug tank. But anyway. Um, yeah. Well, I think now that we've woken up everybody to the PvP community, I think, Kogus, you should tell us where they can find you. Hi, I'm Kogus, <laughs> and you can find me on Twitter. My handle is K-O-G-A-S-S with an underscore. Also at twitch.tv backslash K-O-G-A-S-S with an underscore. I was also featured as a Star Wars The Old Republic content creator. And you guys can go ahead and see what we had a little bit to say in there with the community. It should say right there if you hit that community tab. Content creators of Sotor meet Kogus. And there's a little small interview, and you can see my main tune, Sharkbait Ooh-ha-ha. Ooh, ooh-ha-ha. Atrox, where ooh-ha-ha. can they find you? They can find me on Twitter at Atrax underscore A and twitch.tv slash is it is it backslash? I think it's I backslash. Know. I just say slash. Yeah, whatever. Whatever the right one is. A underscore Atrax. What about you, Marcus? They know where they can find me. And you know where Nick is getting splattered with paint in his face. What are you guys talking about in here? Find out next episode of Working Working Class Class Nerds. Nerds.